Marcus, thank you so much for talking to us today. Um, tell me why you've written the letter that you've written, how important it is to you. Um, it obviously has a huge importance for me, um, probably on a personal level, because um, you know what families are going through now, I once had to go through that um, same system and it's very difficult to, to find a way out, but um, now that I'm in this position that I'm in, it's, it's very important for me to, to help the people that are struggling and um, that was the main reason why the letter was, was written and um, you know whether the, the outcome is that it doesn't change or it does change. Um, I know that I've done the right thing in, in trying to help, help these people. So, Take me back to that time that you talk about in the letter. Yeah. How difficult were things for you? as a kid when you needed free school meals? Yeah, well, you know, my mum was a, a single parent. She's got five kids that was all living in the same house. Now the programme that I started at 11 years old, you, you, you're supposed to start it at 12 years old, which basically gives you uh, a new accommodation, um, closer to the training facilities and, and a new school. And she worked that hard to push it forward because she knew that for me, that was the step I needed to take. I needed to be eating the, the right foods whilst I was growing and I needed to be close to my teammates, my my new school, my new school friends and stuff like that. So, um, you know, she made that decision when I was 11 years old um, and United allowed it. So that was the reason why I ended up going at a younger age compared to the others. Um, it was to help my mum with her situation and also get me out of the situation that, that we was in. So there's, al there's always a big element of, of sacrifice to to try and get to the top level and you know that's that's the one that we had to we had to make initially you know my mum she done she done the best she could I remember we used to go to a shop called um pound world and everything was under a pound and you know we sort of schedule out the week so we'd get seven yogurts and you can have one yogurt a day and and so on so she she done the best she could within the circumstances but there's some families out there like me that have four or five kids so it's literally impossible for for her to to, to take control of the situation. You know, that this is all going on at a time where kids should be concentrating on schoolwork and and stuff like that. And it's just crazy to think that this this is still going on at this you know, we're in two thousand and twenty now and it's just something that I don't believe should be should be happening. We mentioned this at the beginning of, of um COVID nineteen and um you know the problems that we were facing then compared to the problems that we're gonna face after, um which we're sort of getting to now. The one, the problems after, um, you know, the, it's going to be massive consequences of of the virus. So, when you're thinking about your own childhood, growing up in Withenshaw, actually things could have been really different for you, couldn't they? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, 45 percent of of people like me, um, black people, people in different ethnic minorities, um, you know, they're living in poverty and. Um, you know, I was I was very close to to being one of that forty five percent. So I understand that it could have went either way for me, and you know I'm grateful that it went this way for me. But it doesn't make me f forget about what happened in the past. And you know, I, I obviously want to help them people and as much as I can, and just raise awareness really, because I I think some people people want to help. Um, I definitely think that people want to help, but they don't have the understanding or the knowledge behind it, and. They don't know how many people it's actually actually affecting. Something I, I wonder when I when I read the letter, when you were growing up, do you remember being hungry? Yeah, of course. Um, but I also understood. Um, maybe it was just part of me growing up. I I, I just knew how hard that my mum was working. Anyway, so you know, I'd never moan. I'd never do anything. If there's food on the table, there's food on the table. If there's not, I, I had friends that understood my same situation and maybe it was possible for me to go to their house, get some food or whatever. I know that you've written this letter from the heart. Tell me what you hope you might be able to achieve. Well, basically, I'm just hoping that the government make a, make a U-turn on, on the decision to, to stop the free, free meal vouchers. And, and I'm just hoping they do it as soon as possible, really. I know they've, they've mentioned that they usually do this, um, you know, this time of year, summer holidays. But because of because of COVID, the situation's been completely different for for everyone in the world. So, um, you know, circumstances change. So I think, you know, for at least summer holidays, they have to be in a be in, be willing to to make that decision to to go back on themselves.
when you look at what's been happening in the country over the last several weeks, particularly the scenes of protests over the weekend, as a young black man with a platform that you have, already using it for good, um, what can you do? Can you do anything? What message can you send? Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's, you, ha you have to do something, um, especially if, if, like you say, I'm a young black person that um, was in struggling in the system, but managed to find a way a way out and you know help my family. But now that I've done that, it's about helping the families that need you that need you most. So um, I think it's important to to have a voice. It's one thing thinking about it and you know writing them down in your house, but if you don't get that message out to the people um, and to the people higher up that can possibly change the way things are going. Then you know there's there's no point having them them thoughts um, whilst you're sat in your house. So it's important that you you think about it and and then you push the messages out to to the public and also to the right people.